that pack, Ricardo Fabretto, wearing six. Yet another penalty advantage. Dante beaten inside. Important tackle from Garbisi. But that was taken on brilliantly that time by Boudon. And now it's the captain, Olivon. And the French are really flowing here. The arm is out from the referee. France are in the shadow of the post. And I think that Christophe Ridley wants to take another look at this. We will listen. Tempo, coming up to you. My on-field decision is try, but I want to see whether there was a knock-on in the build-up up to the try. Otherwise, we have an offside to go back to. It can't be much clearer than that. Thank you. On-field decision try. If there's no try, we're coming back for a penalty. Grounded at the base of the post. Rocky's gone forward. That's Olivon juggling. Tempo, by the way, is Ian Tempest. You yeah. can see him there, bottom right hand corner. More angles. Thank you. Well, is that a knock on there from Olivon? No, I think he retains the ball. I don't think that's the issue. It's whether he's grounded. I was just on that pop up wondering if he knocked it on there, but. On those first views, it doesn't look like he does, but... You're allowed to... No, I, I, yeah. Again, from these angles, you can't see. There's walk has gone forward, he's popped the ball up. There's a bit of a juggle. And now it's uh, everybody in at the ball. We've had a few of these in the Guinness Six Nations, haven't we? OK, so as long as we're happy that he regathers that ball, or at least stays in control, then we've then got the ball on the line tempo, so... I'll give you time. OK, Christoph, so there's no clear knock-on, so stick yeah. with your on-field decision. Thank you. Try. Let's have a look from Peter Movaka that he gave <laughs> uh, Jonathan Dante, as if to say, what was that? Dante is incredibly important to this side because, again, he gets go forward, he relieves a bit of pressure with the back row. Again, he's the get-out-of-jail man for Jelly Bear. Um, but, no, he won't be happy. Part Crouch. of the skills of being a centre back, any rugby player he should Five. be able to pass the ball. It wasn't, a, you know, a hard pass to do. Set. Just across his body, right-handed. But we all make mistakes, and he's made a big one. The pressure being applied, and the penalty. Uh, Walkie knows the referee now has got a good idea uh, where all that weight is going, and it's going towards the Italian line. They bring the big guys in. This is what happens. Italy have to do something. Good on him. Ramos drawing it in. He don't miss, does he? Pajrello. Oh. oh, and then the knock off. But I think we're going to look at something here. Tempo, do we need to come upstairs? OK. Time off. We're just checking a head contact. Well, that is half-time, Martin, but again, I did see Dante fly up in the midfield. He did recognise something there. Here we go. Watch and out. Point of contact, please. Bang! So, look, again, it's a, it's a very physical contact, but he has... Is that so head-on-head, head head, Tempo? Christoph, it we is head-on-head. Head. We will listen it's head on head and Lads, he's upright, isn't he? So it's definitely foul play. Well, it's going to be a penalty. Well, there's no mitigation. It's foul there. play, and it meets our yellow card threshold, so we're going to send it to the bunker. OK, Tempo, we've got a decision. Yes, Christoph. The, who's the number again? Number, number 12. 12. OK, it's, um, it's foul play because he's upright, and it meets our yellow card threshold, so he is going to the sin bin. OK, so um, the bunker referral has come back, and the yellow card is going to be upgraded a high level of danger with no mitigation. So, Dante is sent off for this. It is ten points to three. There goes the captain, Olivon. Oh, that was stolen, but illegally so, by Federico Ruzza. He knows straight away. Well, that's just the start to this second half. Benicello just popping up off his right wing. 
Zuliani this time. Oh, and the pass was loose. Garbisi did rather well there to secure that. Good counter rut coming from France, but it's a penalty. Run it straight in front. 20 minutes remaining. Garbisi, I have no doubt, will be calling for the kicking team. This got to go. This has to go. Well, Italy have finished just once within 10 points of France in France in the Six Nations. That was back in 2016. Father of Damien Pinot, Alain, is Briggs, Barney. Powering his way forward, there goes Menoncello. Here's Barney now, there's a chance. Ioani, there's Zuliani, pirouetting. Here's Ioani. Italy sensing there's a real chance of a major upset here. Canoni, Garbisi. Brex. Look at the white jerseys lining up. They need precision. That was Menoncello. That's Leonardo Marin. Here's Zuliani. Brex powering his way, looking for the offload. It wasn't available. Canoni. Italy have to be precise here. Lucchese, surely this time, Capuozzo! Italy have scored. The unthinkable has become possible. Well, I talked about the flick, the switch flicking, and they've certainly done that. That is a phenomenal passage to play. Again, the concentration, the precision you talked about, I talked about, just the combination of backs. They didn't panic. People going going through gaps, holding the ball up, popping the ball off the back, ball coming out the back, that angle of, of run superb there initially from a very impressive Menocelli Cello normally plays in the centre, look at there again, you've got to try a little bit of risk, they've done it back inside holding players, stop this French defence, this suffocating French defence well they couldn't on that occasion and the Toulouse guy who plays in an Italian shirt at 15 has just uh, given them an amazing chance, they've got a hard conversion to follow but you've got 10 minutes to go wow well this marvellous arena now has a cathedral silence huge kick he's got it that's brilliant. It's all tied up. 13 apiece. Ramos once more. Marchand. Lead now. Piku. Well, look at the uh, you. timing of no, that from men on cello. Both off the into the red. This is it. Who's going to be brave? Can Italy get a turnover? Can France find some magic from somewhere? There goes Mo Farner. They've got that. They've turned that. Oh, There's a penalty. a penalty! There was always the risk. Zuliani and Lucchese embrace. Well... I just want to keep calm now. This ain't fair on Gabrisi, who's going to have to take this kick well within his range. We should kick these for fun, but <laughs> I was there on Friday night with Italy under 20s, beat France under 20s the first time in 16 games. That's the, uh, the managerial bench of Italy. Marius Goulson going up there with Gisada. And I'll leave this to you. Fabian Galtier cannot believe what he's watching. Uh, all good, nothing clear there. Hello, Darby. And there's a water guy. Wait, 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 we can't talk. What's the shot box there? I can't see the shot box. 
there's a there's a water guy on there that's just right in front of everyone. I'm sorry. Gar PC. Oh, it's off the post. And the ball is still alive. It's taken into touch. And by the thickness of an upright, France have got themselves a draw. Well, it was chaotic for that penalty. Garbisi, in the end, rushed into it. Tommaso Menoncello, at the end of a dramatic afternoon, is named the player of the match. Well, what an end to a Six Nations game. Full-time, France 13, Italy 13.